What do you do when home doesn't feel like home anymore? What happens when things that have felt familiar and routine to you suddenly start to feel strange and foreign? I have been feeling this way about many intertwining things, family, friends, mentors, streaming, Twitch, life, so many things. And I keep asking myself the same question. Where do I go from here? Hi, and welcome to the Nerdy Magical Girl podcast, an experience where I, your host, Milady Confetti, nerd out about whatever I hyper-focus on. This week, I wanted to talk to you about the journey. This week, I wanted to talk to you about new beginnings and the journey of letting go. For those who do not know me, I am Milady Confetti. I am a full-time content creator. I began content creating in 2017, but I didn't take it seriously as I had a full-time job at the time. Um, it, so it was more of a hobby. My formal education is in writing arts, psychology, ethics, and gender studies. I know, it's a lot. And professionally, I was in higher education for a long time, but due to the pandemic, my department closed and content creation was the only lane that was open for me to pursue. So I pursued it. Content creation is not guaranteed like a nine to five. So being that I lost my job due to the pandemic, I poured everything I had into content creation. And remember, during 2020, black creators were under a specific stress with dealing with racial violence being the trending topic every single day, um, with the added stress of being a black woman while all of this is happening. Um, I came out as asexual, which, you know, that was a really warming and honestly like relief of an experience and also me stepping into a whole new community. Um, the pandemic was happening, the election was happening. It was a lot going on constantly. And honestly, I didn't take breaks. I just kept going and going and going and going until one day I had intense chest pain and I had an abnormal EKG and I had a very, very intense migraines and I was in the hospital and I was forced to slow down. Often my content has felt, while it does come from me, I felt like it, I was marching to the beat of what others expected of me. The strong black woman, the outspoken black woman about everything, educating white people for free, educating people in general for free, while trying to exist day to day. The, the pressure of particular expectations I felt were not only self-imposed, but a direct result of my existence as an educated black woman in the space of content creation during a time where black trauma was amplified and put to the forefront, where black joy wasn't so much. Often I asked myself, am I getting opportunities because of white guilt? Uh, am I getting opportunities because I have decent diction or because I have and or had access to higher education? Does that make me acceptable in a lot of spaces? And yes, the answer is yes, um, sometimes that did happen. And then what happens when the whiteness and the patriarchal entities that dominate this space stop caring about black folks? particularly stop caring about dark-skinned black women. What happens? And that was a constant stressor in the front of my mind, in the back of my mind, and it was always churning. And it really, really fueled my drive to keep working until I ended up in the hospital. And I felt that in order to you know, maintain what I had because I'm not going to front. I am not one of these content creators that has a very high sub count. I don't. Um, but I felt in order to maintain what I had, I believed that I was expected to not only play one game, which was Dead by Daylight, but to be a certain way in order to be worthy of support. 
We're going to come back to that. But all of that changed uh, during the new year. New Year's Eve 2021 into New Year's Day 2022, I made a commitment to myself to stop doing what I was comfortable, to stop doing what was routine and doing things that were clearly making me miserable and sick. I was on a podcast recently and um, that morning, yet another black person was murdered via police violence. And I had an epiphany during that show that many people engaged. I felt that many people engaged with me when I was upset, either on social media or on Twitch, um, live on Twitch, um, especially when there was free education happening attached to my rants, whether that be, you know, live on Twitch or on social media in some kind of capacity. But when it came to my joy or certain projects, that I was doing or cosplays or collaborations, that same energy and time was not always given. I had an ex, I mean, he's still living as far as I know, but um, I have an ex who found enjoyment in me being upset. He said that it was entertaining to him when I was mad and when I was upset and that he would constantly do things. So I'd be that way because it was funny to him. It was entertaining to him. Um, and those are words that came from him. And I realized that that is very much how I felt when it came to my content and joy versus all the other things that were happening. And I honestly, in this epiphany, I was like, is that trauma from that relationship? that was not healthy, did that pour into the way that I am as a content creator? Because not to say that, you know, the things that were happening were not authentically me. Like I'm, that is a part of me. That is a part of who I am. I'm not going to deny that I am somebody who is very outspoken, who is very educated on issues. And if you push me too far, you're going to get this work. I'm not saying that that wasn't genuine and that wasn't authentic but I had to really realize that I was letting that and trauma drive everything that I was doing to the point where it made me physically feel horrible, mentally feel horrible and hit rock bottom. And during New Year's, I said, no, no more. I am taking the driver's seat back. I'm reclaiming this. It's so interesting as a black woman when you amplify your joy as a black woman and you often see a decline in your support. And this is something that I want to talk about in detail at a later date, because it's not just audience. It's not just your audience. It's not just your community. It is also, you know, these algorithms and these platforms that cater to black pain and trauma. But overall, it's really sad. And I felt like if our lane as black women is not trauma, or free education, or something that feels very mammy adjacent in the form of entertaining others. I wonder, I said, is it possible to find success? Especially if you don't fit into the particular schism surrounding blackness. What's an acceptable form of blackness? Beauty standards, do you have the right body type? Do you have the right skin tone to get you access to certain spaces? Um, if you don't play particular games, if you're not an FPS gamer, if you're not just a Dead by Daylight streamer, are you able to find success out of it? If, especially if you're like the weird black girl, <laughs> is it possible to find that space for you? And that is the journey that I am currently on. And I want to tell you, honestly, I'm scared. It scares me. But what I'm doing feels so right in so many ways. Now, I'm not trying to sell you on some self-healing journey and that letting go is easy and just do it, just make the decision and you got it. It is hard. Over the past couple of months, um, I have hit rock bottom. And I'm not talking about my content and things like that. While, you know, that's still, you know, going through this weird adjustment up and down kind of cycle. 
I mean rock bottom just as a person, as mentally, physically. I just hit rock bottom. And last week, um, a friend who I hadn't talked to in a couple of months, because I just kind of cut everybody off in my personal life, she came over to my house and just said, what's going on? And I cried my eyes out. I cried my eyes out and just spilled my guts because I was just going through it. And yes, I'm in therapy. I'm do I'm doing everything right, but I'm like, why do I feel like this? Why do I feel so bad when I'm doing everything right? And it was my friend and also um, my current mentor who I absolutely adore. She's amazing. Who told me that everything that I'm feeling is actually completely normal. It's completely normal. Because sometimes as a black woman, you don't want to tell your therapist everything because you don't want to end up like, I don't know, committed or locked up someplace. So, um, you know, I, I, I tiptoe on what I, I share even in session. But talking to my friend, talking to my mentor, I really felt that I wasn't alone. But I'm not going to front this. This is hard. Even if you're not a content creation content creator, healing and letting go, it is tough. But I just wanted to share this because I wanted people to know that you're not alone in feeling the way that you do. A while ago, I went to VidCon. I had the experience to go to VidCon as a feature creator. And for those who are just listening right now to people who are just, you know, listening to the podcast, um, I'm showing footage of my time at VidCon. Um, so, but when you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel during this section and check it out. Um, I've had a really, I have really had a lot of fun. Um, but I was exposed to so many more platforms and learning about what they're doing in the field of content creation, which showed me just how many gaps Twitch has as a platform when it comes to fostering community, when it comes to um, upliftment programs, and honestly, the longevity of your career as a Twitch streamer or as a, as a content creator. And I spoke to many entities. I spoke to Facebook Gaming. I spoke to TikTok. I spoke to Patreon and um, YouTube and YouTube Black. And more and more I talk to, you know, these platforms, but also the more and more I talk to content creators who are on these various platform, the more and more I was de-romanticized by Twitch. I'm not saying that Twitch is all bad. I still do believe that, you know, with the technology that Twitch has, it is still the best platform when it comes to live streaming. However, <laughs> it does have gaps. And I really feel like the more and more I spoke to different people and these different platforms, just the rose colored goggles just really came off for me. And I I am so happy and humbled that I was able to experience something like VidCon as a feature creator. And uh, I really just want to give a huge shout out to It Gets Better and for TikTok for being in my corner and um, allowing me to go to VidCon as a feature creator. You know, I was able to talk to Derek Huff, <laughs> which was so cool. Um, I met so many cool creators. Um, I got to see the Korean vegan who is somebody, you know, I really look up to um, as a creator. Um, I, don't, I don't think she remembers me. <laughs> um, um, I met Jennings, uh, Jennings Brower, um, who is, has a work ethic that is out of this world. Um, I met Beauty to the Streets, Miss Shirley, who I just sat down with her for about 40 minutes and honestly just listened to her speak and just listened to the wisdom that she bestowed upon me um, as somebody who's been doing her line of work and activism for I think almost 15 years for a very long time um, and it was a very humbling experience and it really opened my eyes and I'm so happy I got to experience that so overall what's next well for me I am entering my soft girl cozy girl well-deserved rest era uh, it gets done when it gets done era. Um, as a black woman in this world, we deal with a lot constantly daily. Plus being a content creator, it's rough out there. And I am solely focusing on what makes me happy. And when I say that, I say that from an energy of truly committing to myself and my joy and my healing process 
and my happiness. It's something that I am being an active participant in. I'm gonna tell you right now, this journey is hard. I have had so many, I have had ups and I have had so many downs, so many of them. I have been in this room, my, my content creating room and where I have cried on the floor for hours and it's tough, but I'm going to do it. And I want to thank you all for coming with me on this journey. For my patrons and coffee mates, the bonus material will be coming up right after this. And to the rest, I will see you next week. Bye.